Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Oshile here, and this is Oshi Reads. <sighs> Turning off my bark box. Don't mind me. Trying to film with two dogs is ex incredibly difficult. As we speak, Tobe is messing with my my lighting, the cord of my lighting. And of course, once I run to go get him, he runs away because he knows he's not supposed to do that. <sighs> this past week has just been insane. Tobe has fully come out of his shell. Teddy's finally getting over his depression of like Tobe being a part of the family now. So it's just been a lot, a lot. But I'm here to talk about my auto buy authors today. That's right. These are authors that just, they're just going to get my coin, you guys. They're just going to get my coin. Doesn't matter what they write, what they put out, <laughs> more than likely I will be purchasing. These are these one click authors. If you read a lot on, on an e-reader, you know what I'm talking about. Without further ado, let's begin. Also, I realize that these are all female authors. Girl power. The first author of my list is Christina C. Jones. And I'm gonna put up uh, the book cover of my favorite book by her right over here. But it is Wonder by Christina C. Jones. And Wonder is actually something I read earlier this year for the Blackathon, I believe. And I highly enjoyed it. And Christina C. Jones is kind of the rom-com queen of black fiction, black uh, contemporary romantic fiction. She's all about black love. She's all about hypergamy and, you know, depicting black women in feminine but boss like. Tobe. But boss like. Um, I swear. I'm slowly being driven mad by my dogs, but um, in boss-like ways. And, you know, she does not discriminate against, like, gender roles in a sense. She is very, like, forward-thinking in her writing. She's very feminist in her writing, um, but at the same time, her men are not just black men, but they're masculine, and they're providers, and they're smart, and they're emotionally intelligent and they're interested in relationships and in building the black family and the black community so i really love her books it's just it's such a breath of fresh air and i love to see you know people who look like me and my community reflected positively in a work of fiction i love to see black women as the romantic interests and the damsels in distress and the princesses and yes all those traditional feminine gender roles but i also love to see black women as bosses and business owners and you know very intelligent and highly educated women as we are so i really highly enjoy her books but wonder really took the cake for me I won't go too much into, you know, wonder in this video. I have discussed it previously, but yes, love her. Author numero dos, or numero dos, gotta brush up on my Spanish, is Love Belvin. Oh, I freaking love, 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 love Belvin. I've probably read every book she has written so far. She is one of my absolute favorites. She has such wisdom to her writing, such depth. Ugh, it's just so hard to describe. Her characters are so unique. Her storylines are so unique. I'll put um, the book covers of her latest series, um, Sadiq Books 1 and 2, up right now. And it's really hard for me to describe her, you guys. She's so unique. And I just highly encourage you to check out her works. Another propon proponent of black love in the black community and ref um, depicting and reflecting those in positive light. I just, ugh, I just. I have no words. Love Belvin is amazing. She's a phenomenal writer and I absolutely adore her books. Number three is Alexandria House. And you guys have heard me talk about her recently with her McLean Brothers series, which starts with book one, Let Me Love You. Now this is not the only book series she has out, but it is by far my favorite. I have been getting everyone onto them as much as I can. She is a little bit more uh, mainstream friendly than Love Belvin and Christina C. Jones a little bit more like I don't know I guess just consumer friendly in a way I feel like I can recommend her to people all the way across the board and they will enjoy her books I just I love Alexandria House and the thing about her is that from the first books I read by her to now the McLean Brothers series she gets better with each book 
So it's cool to see her writing talent blossom and develop as she, you know, releases new works. I think that is really cool. But yes, highly recommend. Definitely go check her out. Number five is Sarah J Mass, and I know, I know, I know. There's a lot of controversy around her for some reason. <laughs> you know how book Twitter can be. I believe there was a scandal at one point that her books were not very diverse and all that jazz. Y'all, it's not that deep. It is not that deep. You know, for me, I don't know. I just don't really care. You know, I, I would rather have an author write what they like and write what they know and what they've envisioned than try to like force diversity and it come off really cringy or just, just no. I honestly would rather us support more authors who are actually POCs and let us tell our own stories and it's great if white authors want to write diverse characters. I applaud y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Do it. Do it well though. Do your research know what you're talking about don't just depend on stereotypes but I'm also a huge proponent of us supporting POC writers and us telling our own stories but that's a whole nother discussion but anywho so I don't know I don't get it I don't get the like backlash against Sarah J Mass. like I don't get it I like her I enjoy her books highly addicting both of her series I'll insert a clip right here of all of the her books that I own which I, I believe are all of them I did not want to hold them all up. That would take forever. It takes up like a whole shelf in my bedroom. But I enjoy her. I'm good with her. And she's coming out with a new series soon, and I've already pre-ordered it. So there you go. Auto buy. Now, this next author is a little unique because I've never actually read one of her books, but I continue to auto buy them. And do you ever just get that feeling when you read a book synopsis or you see an author and you see their body of work and you just know you're going to love that author? You just know you're gonna love her books. You just don't know what it is, but you just feel this like soul connection. It's really, sounds really strange, but that's how I feel about Tiffany D. Jackson. I have yet to actually read one of her books, but I continue to collect them. But I got two of her books right here. I wanna show you guys. I gotta put this little guy down. Are you gonna behave? Hmm? You're gonna behave? Right here I have got Allegedly and I also have her newest one Let Me Hear Rhyme. Let Me Hear Rhyme is actually on my TBR for the month so I will be reading this one and then at some point I will tackle Allegedly and then I think she has another book out correct me if I'm wrong something about black girls going missing I can't remember the title of it right now but from those who've read it they said that it changed them so a little terrified to read it Next up on the list, we have Elizabeth Acevedo, my girl. I just discovered her recently, this year actually, and now I am hooked, I am obsessed. She has two books out so far, but you best believe I'm gonna be continuing to buy her books for the rest of time. We've got The Poet X. Fabulous, fantastic, highly recommend. Please, please listen to the audiobook. Like seriously, seriously, seriously. You will thank me later. Also, her latest, With the Fire on High, which my book club read last month. Phenomenal. So good. Also really enjoyed the audiobook for this one. She's, her voice is just everything. Everything. Next up is the queen, Holly Black, who I stand so hard. It's almost sickening. And I feel like recently there's been this, this new wave of people loving her since the Cruel Prince series or whatever you, that series is called. But I just wanna let everyone know that I have been here for you, Holly, okay? I have been here for you since the days of like the fairy series and the coldest girl in Cold Town, which still has like one of the best beginnings to a YA novel I've ever read to this day. To this day! Speaking of, here we go. <laughs> the coldest girl in Cold Town. Also have modern fairy tales. Wow. So we have Tithe, Valiant, and Ironside. And there's a new short story inside, lit. How could we forget the darkest part of the forest, you guys? Good. And then of course, the very controversial, but I still don't know why, The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. <laughs> Holly Black, she is the queen. She is the queen, undisputed. Next up on the list is my girl, Tehera Mafi. Tobe, Tobe, that's not the road you wanna go down. That's not the road you want to go down. Back away from the cord. Back away from the cord. I can blink too. That's 
what I thought. All right, to head on Hoffy, I have her Shatter Me series. I don't have the whole series because I couldn't find the rest of the books. I couldn't find the, the next two books in the series. I don't know. You know how when you move, you always lose things and it's like, how? So I might have to repurchase them, which is really annoying. But I also have the newest ones, which came out last year and this year. Um, let's see. Restore Me and Defy Me. But yes, the Shatter Me series I love. And I also have her Middle Grade series. I don't know where those books are right now. Huh, yeah. They weren't in my room, were they? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know where those are, but I haven't read those yet. I read the Shadow Me series, but I am currently collecting, auto-buying the middle grade series that she has out right now, which I've heard great things about, so there you go. Next up is Saba Tahir. And I actually prefer Saba Tahir's books to Tahira Mafi's books. Um, they are very intense. If you have not read them, I highly recommend the series. Ember in the Ashes is a masterpiece. I definitely understand why it became a bestseller. Like, it's just really good. Um, then it's followed by A Torch Against the Night and then A Reaper at the Gates. And I have a feeling that they're going to redo this whole series soon with new covers. So I'm really glad that I was able to get these covers because I even think that this is like a newish style of cover, right? Yeah, they changed the cover midway through the series, which I hate. I would have preferred for them to stick with these covers. I feel like these covers feel more adult. Like, I feel like more people who solely read adult books would be more comfortable picking these up than they would picking these up. Does that make sense? But, you know, the publishing industry, they do what they do. Next up is Kristen Ashley. Kristen Ashley, I don't talk about her a lot on this channel, which is odd, because a couple years back, I want to say in 2017, is when I really discovered her. Either 2017 or 2016, I'm not sure. I really discovered her, and I can always tell when I go back in my Kindle digital history because it would just have like me buying all of her books. And I actually thought about making a video about this someday soon, but it's so far in the past, I don't know if you guys would be interested. But essentially, I read... 30 of her books in 30 days. It was really intense. At this point, I have read her entire bookography, so to speak, and now I'm just like buying her new books as they come out. I was obsessed with her at one point. I still really do enjoy her, but I have noticed that her newer books are not as good as her older ones, which is always tragic, but she's still an auto buy author for me. I'm sticking it out with her and I'm hoping that her books get better, but she has kind of formed this formula. She has this language that she has and her alpha males are very unique uh, versus, you know, other romance writers. She's just very unique the way that she writes and the way that she puts her stories together. But the issue is now because her uniqueness has become a formula and has become her formula and now it's being reproduced in almost every book that she writes, which is getting very boring and stale and kind of feels regurgitated a bit. So that's becoming my issue with her newer works. But I think everyone should read at least one Kristen Ashley novel if you're interested in romance, especially the more traditional romance, you know, those, those, um, those, what do they call those? Like those paperbacks, those, um, mass market paperbacks. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you are like in, an OG lover of that type of romance or you just newly discovered it, then you definitely, definitely deserve a little Kristen Ashley in your life. Next up, I'm going to talk about Maureen Smith. I've talked about her a little bit here on this channel. Her Denver Rebel series is a gem. I love it so much. And the newest in the series just recently came out a couple months back. And of course, I devoured it. I, I like didn't know it was coming out. And then it popped up on my Kindle Recommended. And I literally squealed and digitally downloaded it immediately and read it in 24 hours. That is what I'm talking about. Her books are like crack cocaine to me. But basically, her books basically just follows this hockey team and their romantic interests. And it is interracial romance. So you guys know I do enjoy um, a good interracial romance now and again. So yeah, I highly recommend her. So good. And her books are long. I don't know what it is about like those long, intricate, interesting romance books, but those are like my kryptonite. And next up, oh my gosh. Tijan. I could not have a list like this without mentioning Tijan. I have been recommending Tijan on this channel pretty much since the beginning of my channel. I feel like she's kind of blown up recently and people are really finding her, which is wonderful, but I freaking love Tijan. She writes like the high school romance that's so dark. I feel like she was writing dark YA contemporary before it was a real genre. So 
go Tijan, you like created this thing. <laughs> but Tijan is fabulous. I think she's still self-published, but she is so good. I highly recommend her. I'm gonna put my favorite book of hers up here. It was definitely a more serious and a darker book, um, which is saying something for, you know, from what she typically writes, but it was so masterfully done. It made me feel so many emotions. I felt like the topic was really important and I thought she handled it really well. And, you know, trigger warning for depression, suicide, and self-harm. But other than that, um, just want to let you, let you know. Um, so good. But yes, she is most famous for her Hi series oh oh my god I used to love those back in the day like back in the day like three or four years ago I was obsessed and I still I still pick up books especially books one through three you know every now and again for nostalgia's sake they're definitely rereadable definitely angsty <laughs> it's over the top to say the least but Tijon pulls it off so Tijon love me some Tijon go check her out but not least coming in at the end but definitely not in order of faves, is my girl Jenny Han. I freaking adore Jenny Han. I really, really, you know, took to her with the summer I turned, not the summer I turned pretty series, oh, all the boys I loved before. That was the first series of her that I read and I fell in love. I freaking love that series and I'm actually rereading it this summer so I'm very excited. And then because I loved it so much, I went back and I bought her first series which is the summer I turned pretty series. And I just finished reading that last week. I read all three books. The first two books I literally read within 48 hours, you guys. I kid you not. And then the last book, I was going to finish it all within 72 hours. But when I got to the last 50 pages of the last book, I just couldn't finish. I was filled with so much angsty rage in a good way. Like, don't you love a book that can make you feel things? That I just could not bring myself to read the last 50 pages because I knew how it was going to end. And I was like pissed so I dragged it out you guys for a full week and let my emotions settle and let myself collect myself and then I finished it and I was much more calm and rational and I understood a little bit more and mm. but yes ah oh, freaking loved this series I am a stan for Jenny anything she writes after this I am there I am pre-ordering I'm actually been like refreshing her author page like okay Jenny like release something please Jenny release something but yeah so those are my auto buy authors. Well, not all of them, but these are the ones that I wanted to talk about immediately. I definitely recommend all of them. Uh, there were It was very young adult heavy, but that is kind of where I'm living these days. I go in and out of young adult, but this is like, it's my home at the end of the day. Like it's, I outgrow it for certain months, and then, but I always come back, you know? I always come back. So yeah, let me know if there are any authors that, um, particularly like adult authors or just authors of other genres that write, you know, different things that you guys love that are auto-buy for you. Ugh, I'm always looking for new author recommendations. So please put them down in the comments. And I think that's it for this video. I'm going to go. I'm running out of breath. I don't know why. I feel like I wasn't breathing this whole video. I'm sorry and I've got to figure out what's going on with the puppies they've been quiet for way too long but I will catch you guys in my next video Mwah. bye guys bye like it but Queenie was good uh, just because um, in the black community of course there is a stigma on mental health Oof. and it's like it just like the book talks about her mental health and she goes through like a lot of crazy things. She makes a lot of poor choices. I yes. Think. A lot of bad yes. decisions. So remember me like coming into work and be like, I'm tired of her. I'm oh, yeah. so sick so of this girl queen. She was listening to the audiobook and she would come in legitimately talking in a British accent I got for like hooked. an hour. And I'm like, I got so And she would be like, hooked. this bloody place. And I'm like, I'm tired of this bloody place. I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea. <laughs>